Hello, everyone. This is Kim Jacobs from The Kim Jacobs Show and Miss Paula Lesso over there. How are you? Great. How are you, Kim? Doing very well, Paula. So glad to have you on today's episode of The Kim Jacobs Show. Listen, everyone, we are going to have a great time. We're going to be talking about how to reclaim you. Yeah. awakening the brilliance that's inside of each and every one of us. So I am so excited. You know the drill and the routine here on The Kim Jacobs Show. Go ahead and share it with your friends, with your family, your coworkers. Paula, this is a great time for you to do the same with your friends that follow you as well. And we yeah. are going to get started very shortly. So go ahead and, and take a moment, guys, and invite everybody to be a part of today's broadcast. Awesome. Got it. Okay. I left one of my audiences out, so I just added them. They're going to be like, hey, who? Why didn't we see it? Come on. <laughs> okay. So, guys, as you know, with the Kim Jacobs Show, this is a broadcast that's shared among multiple platforms. So you can see it on Facebook. You can also see it on YouTube, Periscope, Twitch. You can also you can also see it on or hear it on iHeartRadio. So make sure you know it's in a downloadable version as well. iHeartRadio, iTunes, SoundCloud. So today, at some point, whether you're watching it right now or hearing it right now or throughout later today, you'll get a chance to hear the Kim Jacobs show and my very special guest. Paula Lesso. So I am going to make sure that I introduce this wonderful guest. And Paula, are you? did you get a chance to share it over there? I did. Yes. Thank you. Yay. And you cut your phone off already? I did. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that backstage, right? It's like, okay, we're going to cut the phone off. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. people call and ding in and it's, oh. it's a lot going on, on on the backstage part of a show. People don't know that. And if, as, as I get ready to introduce my guest today, one word that I want to share with you, or it's not even just a word, but a comment, is that I'll encourage you to know that we are all capable of winning in our lives. So make sure that you take that into your spirit and make sure that you know that you are created to win. You can you can win in this journey and don't feel discouraged. I was listening to uh, Jacqueline Carr already. Uh, she was singing on the radio today, and I was thinking how powerful the words were that she was sharing, which is that everything attached to me wins. Everything attached to you wins. So keep that in your mind today, embody that and embrace it in your spirit that everything attached to you wins. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and I have to put my glasses on for this. <laughs> and this is my special guest. Paula Lesso is a Reclaim You coach dedicated to helping individuals step out of mediocre situations and claim the extraordinary life they deserve. She believes that every person has a unique and divine right to live the life of their dreams. See, that's why I love you so much, Paula. <laughs> As a Reclaim You coach with over 40 years of experience, whether she is working one pivot, feeling the effects of divorce, and don't know exactly what's next in their lives, or they're not living the life that lights them up. Paula's positive outlook gives her an uncanny ability to empower people to create major changes in their lives. She has helped countless individuals shift their perception, discover what's holding them back, and take necessary steps to living forward. And we're going to talk about her book, so I'm not going to go into every detail, but she does have a book. What Are You Waiting For is the title of her book, and we're going to be talking about that today. And and her book is very, it's a simple read, but it's very helpful information. So we're going to be talking about that a lot more today. But she's dealing with her past experiences and how she moved past those experiences. She's a motivational speaker and does speaking engagements, personal and group coaching. She's dedicated to showing individuals how to step out of those mediocre situations and, and claim that life that you deserve. She's a foodie, CrossFit athlete, triathlete, ballroom dancer, you name it, this woman is, is pretty much it. So we are all on a personal journey. Let's awaken the brilliance to live the extraordinary life that we are destined to live. So welcome, Paula Lesso. Thank you, Kim. Woo! Yay! Woo! I'm so glad that we're connected. And thank you so much, Cassandra, 
for making sure everything went smoothly in the background. You guys, literally, I'm telling you, you don't know the behind the scenes efforts towards making a show come together. So it's people like Cassandra and Selwyn Davis, they use some collaborative teamwork with my flyers and backstage things and, and Sean Hall and all kinds of people that help me. Uh, Deacon, Deacon Wayne, Deacon Wayne is always somebody that Van, he helps me with my photography and Mr. Joe Harrison with my videography. Frank Jr. helps me with some filming and editing and all kinds of stuff. So I have a full team of people that make the Kim Jacobs show what it is today. So Paula Lesso. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for being on today. Thank you for having me. Oh, okay. okay, so we're going to have a great time. I don't have any scripted questions or anything, but I just want you to take us on a journey because people that are watching my show, they want to know, you know, what has this person been through? What makes them the person that's on the Kim Jacobs show today? Tell us a little bit about your background and bring us up to speed as to where you are today. Great. Yeah. All right. Where to start at the beginning. <laughs> at the beginning. Wherever the beginning is for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny, but um, I raised in a home with a mom and dad. And um, basically how things happened is um, married my high school sweetheart. Um, yeah. And uh, married for 21 years. Great relationship. Great, great relationship. And then... And then it wasn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, after 21 years of marriage, um, it, it wasn't there anymore. Um, basically, and I talk about it in my book, too. Um, he had an affair. So it was one of those things where I'm not going to be a marriage of one. And and at that point, um, it was funny because some people will realize that. And I did in my marriage. It was like something's off. And I wanted to get the passion back in my marriage. It was like, I had to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went to a counselor and I saw a counselor. I didn't let him know that because I felt it was for me. Mm -hmm. And at some point I would let him know, but I realized, and my counselor and I realized before I knew about the affair that I was really grieving the loss of my marriage. And after that, it was, um, now what? moving forward now what right we went to a marriage counselor she recommended a marriage count you know i said what's next and he was like okay but then that's when everything came out and i was like okay that's that's it um however there's so many emotions right i mean wow. it's not just me that was affected it was wow. friends and family and it it was um they're feeling also betrayal and everything. I mean, they they were so upset. And how do you how do I deal with that and help them? But thank goodness I had my counselor so I could move forward. Right. Yeah. And um so many people wanted to like, well, I'm just gonna talk to him. It's like, no, <laughs> it's between wow. him and me, and it's okay. Um and it was because of how I could look at it. And because I had gone before to get counseling, because I knew something was off mm -hmm. and that's what I highly recommend. There are so many things that we think we can handle on our own right. and say that the mind is a terrible place to be because we make up the stories we make up. Well, this is how it should be. Or if I talk to him about this, I bet this is the answer. And really it isn't. Wow. We, we, we really, make assumptions about a lot of things. And um, so I ended up getting divorced and, mm -hmm. and really it was a gift when I think about it. It was really a gift. You have to look at these things sometimes, step back and look. Okay. Gift. I would have never moved to Charlotte, North Carolina from Corning, New York, mm -hmm. if I was still married, mm -hmm. um, just because our families were there. And again, like you say, we're going to talk about my book, but in my book, I talk about messages because I was um, taking quiet time. You don't always have to meditate. Everybody thinks, oh, my God, I have to meditate. I have to write to get messages, to get a word, to get something. And you don't. Sometimes you can be anywhere and it comes. 
Um, and I got a message, um, you know, I would, which, which came out of the blue and unexpected. It was just that I would not be there in a year. So here I am sitting in a, and just think about this, a high school football game. And I felt like it was just me. There was nothing else around me. And I just heard this message. Wow. Like, what? And then it repeated. You, I will not be here in a year. Meaning and, you wouldn't physically be there in a year? Right. I would not physically be in Corning in a year. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, again, you don't have to be, you know, meditating and, it, you know, that special time. You will get messages, but then there's other times too. It just, it comes. And from that point, I knew I was moving south and I had kind of looked at where I wanted to move and different areas and had been here to Charlotte before. Mm. So I loved it. Beautiful city. Mm. And then I started making my plans to get here. And about a year, just about to the day, I moved here to Charlotte. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm so glad you moved to Charlotte. And it's funny because even though the information that we're sharing is universal, so it can travel around the world. So the Kim Jacobs show, people are watching it from all over the country. But I love the fact that some of the people I've connected with are right here in Charlotte with these universal messages, you know? So I really yeah. appreciate you coming yeah. on today. Yes, absolutely. So then I just, you know, um, and I always thought that I wanted to be like a, like a counselor because of how much that helped me. And then I had this experience and then it was moving here. I ended up going to um, Falling Awake um, weekend and uh, Falling Awake to Your Dreams workshop. And it was there that I realized what is life coaching hmm. and um, ended up being in that school, two year intensive study, became a life coach and then thought about, do I become a divorce coach? And then realized that people, not everybody gets divorced that needs to reclaim you. Needs right. to reclaim themselves, their, their, um, who they are, right? So as a reclaim expert, it's like, this is anybody that has like kind of lost themselves or given up things. And I look back on my marriage and realize there were things I gave up. Um, Hmm. One thing that you'll relate to, especially is, so I was raised Catholic, so I went to church, and my husband was not raised in a church. Hmm. So it was easy to not go. Do you know what I mean? Because it wasn't right. something to share. So it was easier not to go. Right. That's where I didn't. Hmm. And then came a time when we were doing, having infertility challenges. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I know, I know it'll work. I'll go back to church. And it was, and I go, so I started going back to church mm -hmm. and, and I'd go home and he'd be like, so how was it? What well, was good? But you can't, you don't have that connection. Right. 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 So I realized that was not a good reason to go back to church. Um, so I, but now I have a church that I love to go to. And that is one of the, um, what you call um, a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. The next man in my life, if he doesn't go to church, mm -mm. If, that, if he is not faithful, if he does not have that, right? So I learned what it is that really feeds me and things that I really need and to connect um, you know, I gave up a couple of hobbies too, because it was just, he didn't, he didn't golf and I love to golf and I would golf with my family sometimes, but yet it, you know, it wasn't, um, something I always, we did a lot of, so it was just, right. okay, I kind of let it go. Now I look back and go, wow, I allowed that. Hmm. I had to take responsibility for me because I'm hundred percent responsible for me. And then. I allowed it. Hmm. So you get what you allow. I mean, yeah, it was. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking back on, wow, I've got a lot of experience and can ask those probing questions of people. Where are wow. you at now? Right. And then they'll 
it comes up for them. And what I say is awaken that brilliance that we've tamped down, whether it's from career, family, marriage, it, it could be any um, relationship you have any in any way, you know, friends or anything that you kind of let things go. And, you know, maybe something you had fun as a kid, but you, oh right. no, you're a grown up now. We can't have fun and <laughs> we can't do those things we did as kids, right? And yet, what lights you up? Like you said in my intro, you said, what lights you up? What is it that lights you up? Well, let me, before you go further, because I mean, these, this is interesting that you've taken us on a journey already. Here, you, you've tackled multiple topics. One is someone you fell in love with in high school. Yeah. which in high school really, you know, it's kind of interesting to say I'm in love forever, you know, and that, that's right. an interesting situation yeah. in itself, right? Because at that moment, there are so many people watching this show that are young and they, they're, they're like infatuated and they feel like this is it for life. What advice do you have for people that really do feel like this is it for life? And then there, there are real stories, success stories, that this is it for life is for life and it's worked for them. 63 years of marriage, 55 years of marriage, mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of success stories too. Yes. What advice do you have for people that are looking at someone that they're with at a high school level and they're trying to determine if this is going to be for the rest of their lives? Well, always have communication. Communication is the heart of any relationship. And that's what I say. So make sure that there's always that communication, know what your goals are, what each other goals are. And because sometimes my goal, you may not know that I have that goal, or I may not know you have a, some, something that you like to do. And, and if we don't communicate it, we just assume sometimes, again, make assumptions that, well, they know, right? They know I love them. No, say it. Um, say, I love you. And one of the, oh, one of the, biggest things that I believe in is the five love languages, understanding your love language and the love language of your partner. Cause you think you're filling their love tank according to what your love language is. And it's not. Wow. Well, okay. So this is good. What you're saying is really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pivot for a second because I think it's important too, that I let everyone know that with your situation, it you and your spouse um, decide it, it does literally feel like somebody passed away. I almost said somebody passed away because <laughs> yeah. it feels. Does it feel like that to you? Please talk about that. What does divorce feel like from your eyes? It it is a loss. I mean, a huge loss. Um, like it, we were married twenty one years, and that's a that's a big loss. It is like grieving a death, and luckily. God had another plan for me to be down here, not for us to have children, not for us to have that connection that's that a lot of people have because they had kids together and they got divorced, but they have, um, you know, that connection still, no matter what, they're always going to be in their lives. I didn't, I don't have that, but yet it's still a loss. It's, and like I said, friends and family, you're still having to deal with them sometimes. Right in their, what are they grieving for you or their, their own loss? That's you know, right. family, Cause he was part of the family. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, do you all have a good relationship now where you're able to communicate? Uh, my, you mean with my ex? Uh huh. I have no reason to communicate. Oh. <laughs> so well, see, this like, is a learning lesson for me. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Um, I, and it was a loss for me because I lost his family. Wow. There were some that I still are in communication with me and we still see each other and communicate and everything. Not all of them, a few. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's a loss in both sides. Wow. And, and yeah. That's very interesting. Cause I mean, uh, people don't always talk about it from the perspective that you're sharing. And I think that there's so many people that watch my show that have experienced divorce and they still, how do they keep smiling? Like how you're still smiling and saying, reclaim yourself and we're gonna to transition to that. But I wanna make sure I let people know that tomorrow's topic, this is gonna be important too. So yeah. we're talking today about reclaiming yourself and she's been through a divorce, but tomorrow's topic is what to do before you say I do. 
Very good. Now, I had no idea actually that the two of you were back to back, but it just happened to work like this and it works in tandem. It's beautiful because tomorrow, before you even say I do, Bishop Timothy Powell is the author of What to Do Before You Say I Do. And we're going to deep dive into that topic tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. So make sure that you tune in for that episode. We're going to be doing a flash round because sometimes I actually go too far and the people are like, hey, I have some comments and questions. So let me go quickly to some of the comments that have come in and more people will type throughout today's broadcast. But this is my studio audience coming to the virtual mic. Uh, Pamela Howard said, great women, the balanced doctor and the personal journey coach. Thanks. <laughs> and you can comment or anything you want to say, Paula. To yeah, that's great, Pamela. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh, Babette says, great ladies, great topic. <laughs> oh. And oh, Rita is on. She said, hey, Paula. Hey, Kim. Uh -uh. And you know, she's a self-care expert. Yes. She does all kinds of stuff. She had me doing some wiggling in my toes when I had her on. And I felt so, I'm doing it right now, actually. I felt so much less stressed just because of some basic self-care tips that she shared with me on the show. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay. Somebody else tie. Oh, my mom. My mom is funny. Oh, she's like, green. <laughs> she's saying everything. She's trying to help me out. But I wore my lemon dress today because my mom is always talking about turning lemons into lemonade. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, I'm wearing my lemon dress today. So <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So now you are the author of mm -hmm. talk about, let's talk about your book. What okay. are you waiting for? That's yes. the best question ever. Yeah, right. Yes. I've read your book multiple times. Okay. And it's a very simple read. Yeah. I, it's, it's a great read. And, and the tips are easy to apply. So let's mm -hmm. talk through your book some. Sure, yeah. Um, and the funny part was how that came about was that picture is on the back of my business card. And two people at different times said, that's a book cover. That's a book cover. And I said, oh, oh maybe I'm writing a book. <laughs> and then a coach friend of mine, I said, um, uh, Glenn Proctor, I said, you know, maybe I'm writing a book. And those are the things that you don't say to a coach. I think maybe or I might is in doubt, right? Right. And they just gave me this look. It was like, I'm writing a book. <laughs> it's like, yes, you are. I'm doing this, right? I'm doing this thing. And it was looking at that picture with my head cocked to the side and stuff like that. And it was like, well, what are you waiting for? And that's funny because before you even go further, the thing is that's so opposite of your attitude. <laughs> like that, like for people to see you like here on the show, yeah. you're so meek and mild and you know conservative. You're not <laughs> it's like then I see the book cover, I'm like, I'm like, okay, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> well, what made you what made you pose like that, even if it was just for the business card? Well, um, and Donna Jernigan was there. And what happened, um, we took pictures one other time that were like, yeah, real boring. <laughs> and so we we found this. This is at Ramir Beard and Park in the fountain, the waterfall. And I said, you know what? My running music. I got to put on some music because that's what really gets me moving and excited and going. Mm -hmm. and out of my, I think it was J-Lo. I had my running music on and I just you know, stood there and yeah, it was like, this is fun. And that made a huge difference. Wow. So mm -hmm. now when, when you're talking about what are you waiting for? So many people are stuck and, yeah. and stagnant and, and waiting for, I don't even know what it's like waiting for the epiphany, the <laughs> aha moment, the, Oh, this is it. This is the sign. What, what do you mean by what are you waiting for? What did you mean um, by that question? That question is, in your life, there are things that are missing, right? And like you said, you're stuck. Um, what are you waiting for to take that step? To step out of fear, anxiety. Um, and sometimes we don't know. So that's why I put that um, in the book, you know, what are you waiting for? 
And in the in the front, you know, it has a bunch of questions about, you know, you're waiting um, to, you know, waiting to be happy before you move forward, waiting for your ship to come in, waiting for someone to say, I love you. You know, are those things that you're waiting for that these are things you can take action on rather than waiting for them? And that's why at the end of each little segment, it's like, and I ask people in, in that, what am I waiting for? And then the, um, what am I waiting for? Or what am I waiting for? Or what am I waiting for? You know, so there's all the, right? Putting right. Uh, the um, emphasis on the word. So at the end of each little section, it's like, kind of make you think about, oh, what am I waiting for? What do you feel you were waiting for? for you to finally take your step to even write your book, to start back to golfing, to move to Charlotte. What, what do you feel? I mean, because those are a lot of steps. So and a lot of change and transition. So what do you feel you were waiting for? And how did you get unstuck? Um, so that's a, that's a great question, you know, and I, and I have to think back sometimes because where I'm at right now is so different right? Than where I was. So mm -hmm. I really have to look back at and go, hmm, so what was I waiting for? And I think having that um, happen in my life, that major change, mm -hmm. and it was like, who am I? Mm. And what can I do for me? Right? So I was in the marriage, part of the marriage, and letting go of things and giving up things and then going, wait a minute. What is it that I want for me? Hmm. And that was the, the biggest question, you know, what? Yeah. You know, take care of me and it's OK. It's not selfish. That's right. 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 And the thing is, like what you're saying is so critical because anybody that's married knows that as a, at least from a female perspective, we go to great extremes to make sure that our spouse is taken care of. Are your needs being met? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you lacking anything? What is it that I could do better? It's a lot of, of consideration for the other person. Barely do you, I mean, I can, I can definitely say barely do you focus on well, what about me? What do I like? What do I want? What do I want you to do more of? And that's kind of, you don't take that approach if you're always trying to look to give your spouse the best versus you taking the best, you know? Yes. And then giving yourself permission to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Giving yourself permission to, you know what? I want to do this today. Or I want to go um, shopping with the girls or I want to just sit and read a book or I want to, Right. So giving yourself permission mm -hmm. to take care of yourself and, you know, um, like you said, to sit and breathe and wiggle your toes and take care of yourself. You know? That's really yeah, good. Like, go, go, go. Just running, running, running for everybody else. It's like, wait a minute, stop. You know, a lot of people in their careers, right, we give everything to the career, to the family, to the kids. And that's why the moms, soccer moms, um, career ladies, in the relationship, whatever. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, time to retire. Now what? Now who am I? Now you have to identify. Right. Right. Now is when you want to start thinking about these things. You want to take a look at it. You want to reclaim that person or what are the things that you, you may not realize what you've lost right now mm -hmm. yet or given up, but it's good even to think about, to just start and go, wait a minute. Hmm. I want, yeah, this could be different. This could be different. How could it be different? So yeah, so that's why it's you want to start now thinking about those things. You know, I'm, really, I'm, I'm typing that. What are you doing up that you really yeah. like? Yeah, you right. don't necessarily give those things up. Right. No. See how you can incorporate them into yeah. your existing, into your, into the fabric of your life is what I think yeah. I'm hearing you say which I love. I'm typing it and putting it across all the platforms. So think about it for a moment. What are you giving up that you really like about you and try to kind of reclaim those things and, and keep those in the forefront? Wow. I love that. 
Paula, you're giving such great advice. And make sure everyone, you know the routine. If you want to type a question or you have a comment or anything, go to the mic and go ahead and type it. If you want to be brought into the show, I've shared the link as well. If you want to come in and say something directly to Paula, I do want to make sure that I take a moment to let you know that today's episode of the Kim Jacobs show is sponsored by Silver Shill Security. And I will take you right to their site. And listen, the thing is, I, I love, I love Silver Shill Security. I love the fact that they don't require any contract, no credit check. So it's, it's such a great opportunity for anyone that's interested in getting your home secured. 704-440-4688. And the monthly monitoring starts as low as $24.99 a month. And then it goes up depending upon some of the services. It is a very professional establishment. And make sure you use the code KJ show when you reach out. And let me go ahead and, and play this for you. This is directly from the owner of Silver Shield Security. Hi, I'm Janelle Jackson, CEO of Silver Shield Security. <laughs> Silver Shield Security is a full-service alarm systems company. We provide the latest in technology for your home and your business. Our products include wireless alarm systems, video cameras, motion detectors, keychain remotes, facial recognition, and much more. Silver Shield Security believes that everyone has the right to be safe. With this in mind, we don't require a credit check or have our customers sign a contract. That's right. No credit check, no contract. You simply pay your activation, your first month of service, and you're on your way. Services start as low as $24.99 per month for basic services and $19.99 per month for our senior citizens. Order your system today and receive a free doorbell camera. Call us now at 704-440-4688. Again, that number is 704-440-4688. Silver Shield Security is dedicated to making everyone in the Carolinas safe. No exceptions. Okay. So make sure you know that Silver Shield Security is available as an option. And that is, I personally have Silver Shield Security as well. And I just recently started utilizing their services. Very professional. And I'm, I'm so pleased. And then in addition to that, they sponsored the Kim Jacobs show. And the code that you can use is KJ show. Say the Kim sent you. OK. And thank you so much for your sponsorship, Silver Shield Security. Also, I encourage you to subscribe to the Kim Jacobs show right on YouTube. It takes only a minute. So go ahead and subscribe. Click that notification bell. And when you do that, you'll get a chance to have all of the times that we come on and it'll pop up right in your in your notification system so make sure you do that so reclaiming you paula reclaiming yes. you it's all about the brilliance in you awakening it it's lying dormant in so many people how do they even know where to begin to start reclaiming themselves because sometimes it's easy for people i mind this is what i've noticed anyway it's easy for people once they've reclaimed themselves and they're like, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a move. I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. But what about where you really don't know where to begin? Yeah. I mean, you don't. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of times we don't even know what we're missing. We don't know what we don't know. Right. And it's like the feeling that I had. And, and it's a gut feel. It's mm -hmm. a, you know something is missing. It's a gut feel. Just like I knew something wasn't right in my relationship. And that's when I started seeing a counselor. Like I said, I thought it was me that had to fix it. You know, as women, we always think we have to fix everything. <laughs> so, but it's a, it's a gut feel, you know, you just know. And that um, piece of intuition that we call, it, you know, that women's intuition. So it's like, okay, then just reach out to me and let's have a discussion about where are you at in your life? You know, a lot of times, um, you know, I always feel that men and women, we get married as a couple because we chose to do that. Right. That means to bring kids into the situation. If that, if God says, yes, you will have children, then we bring children in, right? Right. Okay. Children grow up and they leave and go, or go to college or get married, right. Or leave, right? They're out of the household. And I always believe that you don't want to be then looking at each other going, well, and who are you? 
I'm Kim. Yeah. You are? You're like, what? Right? So always you have to, that's where we get lost in, in our life and reality and going from here to there and not keeping that relationship together. You know, making time for each other um, and, and being able to then say, hey, you know what? Yeah, the kids are going to be growing up and, and out soon. So let's plan some stuff for us. And we don't. And that's what happens. I think a lot of times it's what happens. Um, and again, you don't have to be married or divorced or any of that, but I deal with that also. But even in your life, just going, you know what, where's my joy? Where's my fun? Yes. That, that's where it's like, just stop for a second go, oh my gosh, where's my joy? Where's my fun? I'm just always doing. Mm -hmm. So something's missing. Yeah. yeah. Really right. good. And so identifying those things that you like about that you go back to your childhood passions and things that brought you joy. Like for me, I love reading. I, I have always have a good book and I'm sitting there, I'm highlighting, I'm listening to an audio book. I, will, I love watching movies. It's different things that I enjoy. Dinner and a movie. It's like so I don't have any concern about what it is that I like to do. I like to do what I like to do and I'm clear about it. But then, like you said, there are people that don't know. So they have to go back and do, do you do like a specific exercise that takes them through the journey of self-discovery or something? Yeah. It's like, like, especially when they think about why I don't do that or, you know, I said, what lights you up? They'll start talking about, it. well, when was the first time, you know, we go back and because everything happens in, really in our childhood, when was the first time that happened or when did you discover that? Or, you know, um, there, it's so funny. I was looking up hobbies because we give up hobbies a lot. And I was looking right. up hobbies and there's this woman that what she does professionally is finger paint. Actually finger paint. That's, she's a professional. Yeah. And it was so much fun to watch. And her paintings are amazing. The detail in finger painting. Wow. And she said she started out that she had painted something, but she wanted to fix something in it. Mm -hmm. And all the brushes were dirty. Oh, okay. like, okay. So she went and got some paint on her finger and then she started fixing it. And then she's like, wow. And so you, you, I can't remember her name, but if you go to finger painting, I mean, there's this, and it's amazing. So you, it's learning that, right? Maybe you want to paint, maybe you want to cook or bake, or you'd love to, go to a, a chef or go to a school, just because you really enjoy that, who knows what might come of it. That's you right. might maybe singing or playing an instrument, go hear a band or jam with someone, right? <laughs> I knew you were gonna use the word jam with someone, but it's so it's just so funny when you say certain things, Paul, <laughs> cause I cannot imagine you listening to J-Lo talking about some jam with somebody. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay. laughs> I know. Now, yeah, see, we have to have a different. We have to have a different kind of like time together one day because I really want to see you jam. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I know there is a little bit of a different side to me, and it, yeah, it comes out every so often, and yeah, just having that those moments every so often, yeah. Well, that's funny too because when you say different sides to us, we all have different sides. Like I'm in the bathroom, I have my music on. Uh, my my son, my son, I even gave me this uh, this boombox thing, and oh. it it really is like a Bluetooth device that you can just it goes loud. And I'm in there, and I'm, they're like, "Mom, why do you play the same songs over and over?" Because <laughs> I like what I like, you know. Yes. And so I'm in there. I'm having a ball. They're like, my, please, it's too much. Cut it off. You keep playing the same thing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But yeah. you, you have to know what you like, right? Yes. yes. The, <laughs> yeah. What other advice do you give people? Any other tips or things that you want to share with people as takeaways? Um, I would say, so other tips is... Um, It's okay to talk to somebody else. It's okay to say to to that that's it for me. Is like one of the things is asking for help. That's one of the biggest things for me that I'm working on is it's okay to ask for help. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you're actually strong. You're actually strong because you're taking care of you. 
That's a strength. Right. Um, reach out and go, you know what? I, it's okay. I can't handle this on my own. We can't do everything on our own. No. We really can't. Everybody has a strength of some sort. I'm, you know, I can't build things and stuff, but someone else, you know, like I can answer those probing questions. I Because you know what? I consider myself the third party objective person. I have no skin in the game. I don't no. know what you've been through. I don't need the story. I just need to know what's going on. That's good. And yeah. I do. I and mean, I'm glad you said that too, because so many people, when they do reach out for help, sometimes people, I can, I can tell because I've counsel so many people myself or coach so many people, they, they're they definitely in wearing a mask and trying to figure out, and I, let me not even speak about other people, I can speak about myself. When I've reached out for help, because sometimes people, you're easy to speak about other people, yeah. but nobody talks about themselves sometimes. And so when I've reached out for help, because I have reached out professionally for help that I've needed in different aspects of my life, I will, it, I'll interview somebody first. So I'm like, what church you go to? <laughs> I'm asking all kinds of questions. They're probably like, why is she doing that? And it's because I'm trying to determine how much information I'm going to reveal to that person based on how much they, they may know about different aspects of life. Yeah. And, and so does that happen when you're coaching people? And if so, how do you recommend people take off the mask to be transparent? Because it's not it's not that easy whenever you're not sure when you're in a small community and you know that you need help in a specific area, but you don't want to uh, say too much to somebody that may know who you ask and help about. It's weird stuff. You know, a lot of different dynamics. And my sons, they'll be like, well, why did you say that about me? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't I didn't even say it wasn't bad. It was a positive. It was it was something that was edifying and uplifting. But still, they're like. I didn't want you to say that to that woman about me, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. So how do you know? Right. Yeah. They, it, and I can tell it has to be a comfort level between both people, right? You have right. to connect. You mm -hmm. have to have a connection. And I can tell. So I'll just ask another question or a different type of question because I can tell if they're a little hesitant. And it's like, okay, well, what about this? You know, I'll ask a question um, and one of them, one of the biggest things is, especially when you get asked a question, I've even had this happen to me. I get asked a question. I go, I don't know. I don't know if you find that is to be like the very typical answer. A lot of times you'll ask a question and people go, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> so you give me an answer is what they want. They're like, you tell yeah. me the answer. <laughs> I'm like, and right. And the thing is, though, um, I call that being in the dumb air because your brain just shuts off. It just goes frozen. You cannot think of another thing. You go, I don't know. And boom, it's done. Right. So I go. And if you did know. <laughs> and all of a sudden it puts them in a different mindset. It's, it's almost they're like not on defense out of your body. Right. Taking them on into. Well, if I did know as if I was somebody else and then they start answering. It's like, right. okay, you know. I'm answering for a friend. I'm coming to talk to you as if this happened to a friend. Now I can talk freely, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, it's not about me anymore. Right. Yeah. So that That's is true. so huge. When And if you did know. And I was like, oh, well, if I did know, boom. Right? And mm -hmm. it's so funny that that happens. Wow. Yeah. Because we do get stuck in that way. And it, it's funny to watch, to watch the, that transformation. And then they, and the other thing too, is I just keep asking questions. Like you said, they want us to give them the answer mm -mm. because I give you the answer and you go and do that thing. I tell you to do right. Whatever advice, advice, and I'm not giving advice is okay. I say, okay, go do it this way or go do, and it doesn't work out. Who are they going to come back to me? So, I, we talk about, I ask them questions. How could you do this another way? How could you answer that? How could you, that's, that's the biggest thing, right? Right. And then all of a sudden they come up with different answers. Hmm. And then what resonates with them? It's like, oh, I could. And then they have their answer because it comes from them. Mm -hmm. Then they go do it and they own it. 
That's good. That's really, really good. Now, what about people that, and you know, they, like you say, you have that women's intuition, that gut feeling. And there are a lot of people that are in life that just have gut feelings. And, but sometimes their gut's steering them right. And sometimes their gut's steering them wrong, you know? So that yeah. gut feeling is not always the truth. True. You know, so how how do you work with people or suggest any tips or ideas for people that have that gut feeling of whatever it is? Like you said, it doesn't have to be just even relational. It could be a gut feeling that my life is just not going in the direction that I want it to go. And I'm not doing the job that I want to do. I'm not living my dreams. I'm not living my purpose, whatever area of life that it is. Or in your case, you said it was regarding you just had that gut feeling about your spouse and you thought something was off. So you went to get some personal help. But when you realized that it was not that you were crazy, it was that he was doing some stuff he had no business doing and you wanted to call it quits. So how, what advice do you give people that have that gut feeling? How do they cultivate it and, and, and really follow through on it to, to bring some resolution to it? Well, one of the biggest things is to actually journal, to, to write down, all right, this is how I'm feeling. Of course, some people, I don't know how to journal or I hate journaling or I, whatever. They, they're just not into journaling. But what I recommend is just sit down with a piece of paper. And even if you say that, I don't even want to be doing this. I don't even know how to journal. I don't write. I, what is this journaling thing about? And as you keep writing, it comes out. All of a sudden, you're just writing things. It's about, and I, and I love this, in um, writing things that you've never written before. Mm -hmm. And I help people with when they kind of discover and reclaim, it's like saying things they've never said before or doing things they've never done before. Hmm. And yeah, so it's like journaling, put it out there on paper. And even like I said, you know, um, go somewhere. I know we used to be able to go to like coffee shops and stuff, but or even in a park, but just sit there and journal out of your normal um, surroundings, right? Okay. Cause your mind is still, um, have those surroundings, right? You're still part of the surroundings. Go away from your regular surroundings and journal. I mean, yeah. men and women. <laughs> I know. Yes. And Every then you're saying as you journal, then you start to realize things that are kind of surfacing in your mind as a theme, as a common theme. Yes. I mean, you kind of know what to go and get help for. Yeah. So it's like, wow, I've just discovered that I've given this up or I'm not happy in this relationship or right. Or, you know, my time is gone. What am I doing? I'm like you said, not happy in my job. I'm what am, what am I really looking for? And that's where we reclaim. Let's get back to, you know, or even move forward. You know, it's about living forward taking what we have now, the present, and then living forward from there, going, yes, this did shape me from my past. Mm -hmm. However, let's live forward. Because we don't, we don't want to live in the past. And the present is what we have right now. That's right. And then, you know, we're not going to be so future that, I mean, we're going to think about what we want. Mm -hmm. And then how do we get there? That's really good. Really good. Speaking of what I want for a second, says you have to put it out in the atmosphere, what you want, right? I would like and yeah. want support for the Kim Jacobs show. So make sure you know that there are different options and ways that you can support the Kim Jacobs show, not to utilize my guests to pivot to <laughs> support the Kim Jacobs show. And we're grateful because it gives us an opportunity to put the funds back into the actual show itself and to any of the participants that help with the show. So you can cash app to Kim Jacobs Inc. or paypal.me forward slash Kim Jacobs Inc. And that is definitely a way that you can support the show. And I encourage you to subscribe to the Kim Jacobs show, take a moment and just be a, a part of being able to subscribe on my YouTube channel. By doing that, you get a chance to get notified when the shows come on live. Let me see too that, make sure I give you Paula's information. Paula Lesso, Paula at PaulaLesso.com. And she is very calming spirit and, and welcoming. And then she can even dance, do some J-Lo. You never know what kind of session you're going to have. <laughs> but make sure you reach out to her. And on Facebook, they are able to follow you where, Paula? Paula Lesso. 
Okay. And then it, it'll say personal journey coaching under that. So yeah. make sure you know that you can stay connected with Paula Lesso through her social media sites as well and directly through her website. And she does respond back to you directly and will work with you one on one. So you can look into her packages and and her personal journey coaching. So let's see. Some people have typed a comment. Let me see if they're. Cassandra says, Paula, how can we get your book? Oh, that's a great question. I love it. So Amazon.com and barnesandnoble.com okay what are you waiting for yep to um, the best day to start living available on amazon.com mm -hmm. or barnesandnoble.com barnes and noble and if you're local in charlotte you can go to park road books barnes and noble.com let me type that i'm typing what you're saying okay yeah, yeah. Or probably cassandra's probably typing it too i should have just already <laughs> probably thought that <laughs> she's probably like okay so there you are you can get what are you waiting for by going to amazon.com or bonds and noble.com or it's also available at park roads book in charlotte north carolina so let me yeah. put that on the banner too for you thank you what are you waiting for? The book is available. Author is Paula Lesso, available on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. You can also get it at Park Roads Book if you are in Charlotte. Cassandra, if you could type that for me too. And it's Park Roads Book in Charlotte, North Carolina. They do Park have Road, it. Park Road Books, yeah. Park Road Books in Charlotte as well. They have it on, on the shelves there. Huh? Wow. Okay. I mean, I feel like this has been a, a journey in itself. We've talked about so many things. Is yeah. there anything that you feel like you still want to share that would be any additional takeaways or closing comments type of thing? Because this has been helpful. Great. Well, the other thing I do on my Facebook, I do a Facebook Live too. It's called Toolbox Tuesday. And I have a little toolbox. I think I have it with me. Yeah. It's a little Toolbox Tuesday. And I just look to see what's in the toolbox and just talk about different things that maybe you've gone through or experienced. Um, I've talked about the talking stick. I don't know if you know um, that is, but, and actually I had a, um, um, a chopstick and that's so that for relationships, especially, I mean, this is friends or significant others or marriages or even families, especially now. That was why I brought it up was you, um, talking stick whoever has the stick is the person talking oh, okay okay and then the other and then and nobody interrupts and you just get to say what you need to say and then the and then you can pass that on and go to the next person and then you could create your own you know create your own talking stick most people have a wooden spoon or they have something you could decorate one and right or if if someone needs to vent like i come home and i need to vent to someone or a friend Right. Just listen. That's all I need you to do is listen. But as long as I have the stick, I get to talk. <laughs> I love it. We call those in my house table topics. And uh, yeah. We have a box filled with cards and each person pulls a card and they talk about that topic. Uh -huh. And each person goes around and talks about it. It is different than what you're saying. So now I'm going to imp implement the talking stick. And it's like now you have the floor. No one interrupts. No one judges. You just keep it. Keep yeah. it for that person's comments only. I love it. When is your when is your Toolbox Tuesday Facebook Live? So Toolbox Tuesday about two thirty, and uh, you know talk about endurance and what are we enduring during this time and um, pivoting. I've talked about you know lemon. You know what what can we do with that? Like you said, you have your lemon dress on today. How do you deal with those lemons that come in our lives? You know. I love it. I knew to wear something bright and, and motivating as I reclaim my brilliance with Paula Lesso today. <laughs> Let me yeah, see. Yeah. In yeah. the comment section too. Let me put that back up. Toolbox Tuesdays. And I only repeat what you say sometimes because some of my listeners, I want to make sure they capture that point that point that are on uh, iTunes and iHeartRadio. Toolbox Tuesdays with Paula Lesso. She has a Facebook Live that's at 2.30 p.m. every Tuesday, and she reaches in the toolbox and gets something different to talk to you guys about. Never know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something that's going to help you on your journey in life. See, that's a commercial, right, Paula? 
That's right. There you go. <laughs> I, love, I love doing this show. Yeah, I'm serious. And, you know, that if nothing else came out of quarantine and COVID-19 and from a positive perspective in my life, definitely being able to kick my show back into gear has been yeah. extremely motivating for me. And I have great guests like Paula Lesso. I have my own personal bishop coming on tomorrow, Bishop Stenneth E. Powell. And he is he's going to just drop some serious knowledge on tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait either. Yeah, so. see, and, and look at how lit up you got. I mean, this lights you up. And that's what I mean. What lights you up? What gives you joy? What really lights you up? And, um, you know, that's what you want. I mean, it's not going to... Oh, you know, I got lit up by whatever. This is what lights me up. And that's the important thing. And that's why it's about reclaiming you. That piece that 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 flame is out, right? We wanna we wanna have that flame flickering and being bright. And yeah, that's why well, I, yeah. actually one of the things that really light me up is doing a Gabe's way random acts of kindness. Oh, so when I just randomly surprise people and give them that glossy card that says you've just been served with a doing it Gabe's way random act of kindness, that right there I could do every day. Every day for the rest of my life to see the excitement and and the um, smiles and the crying and people are like, "Oh my gosh, you just picked me out of any out of the air. I, you don't even know me." That's the whole point. I don't know you. I'm just doing it Gabe's way, you know? So I get a chance to keep my son's heart beating just by doing random acts of kindness through Gabe's heart mm -hmm. foundation. And that's a blessing to me. Wow. I am loving this. Okay. So Paula Lesso, you can contact her at Paula at PaulaLesso.com. And you guys know in the studio audience, every time we get to the end of the show, you guys start typing like crazy. <laughs> I don't know why. Come on, guys. I don't know why everybody wasted the last two minutes and types like six <laughs> questions. But if you have a quick question, go ahead. We're going to end at noon. But if you have a question go or a comment or a shout out to Paula, go ahead and do it now. <laughs> go ahead and do it now. <laughs> Subscribe to The Kim Jacobs Show. And then let me also let you guys know that at noon, we have our Quest Church prayer line. Mm -hmm. And that's where Pastor Jacobs is praying for people that have been impacted by COVID-19, those that have had loved ones pass away. This mm -hmm. this disease, this whole pandemic has not let up like talking about it. It's still heavily in effect, wearing mandatory masks now in most states. So you can tune in to what's well, not a show, but he's actually praying. Let me get off the show, my He's praying and it's on 978-990-5000. Access code, you have to type it in as 322-083-POUND. And Monday through Friday from 12 to 12.30 p.m., you can be a part of that prayer. Any last comments coming? Let's see. And I want to leave any of my studio audience members out. <laughs> I have a great studio audience. They do participate every day and they write do. comments. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Rita said, hey, so proud of you toe wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. You I'm go, Kim. Yes, thank you, Rita. Good morning, ladies. Great show. Okay. So I think I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I think everybody's comments have been recognized. Awesome. Oh, well, thank you for being my guest today. You are very welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this. Yeah. You are a joy. And I'm, I'm excited about your book. What are you waiting for? Reclaim your brilliance, guys. Go get her book at Amazon.com or you can get it at Barnes and Nobles right online or at Park Roads Books right in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. One final thought and we're going to close on that note. What do you want to say, Paula? Wait no more and reclaim you. Wait no more and reclaim you. See you tomorrow, everybody, at 11 o'clock a.m. with Bishop Stenneth E. Powell from the North Carolina Second Jurisdiction talking about what to do before you.